All aboard, all aboard, all aboard, all aboard. Listen to this. Dig. Scape. Dig Scape presents Crossroads. The military, the monetary, the mercenary. Just to warn you, Dig Scape contains some disturbing audio that may cause nausea or have an adverse impact on your psychological well being. This is war to extermination. Fight cell by cell through bodies and mind screens of the earth. Souls rotten from the orgasm drug, flesh shuddering from the ovens. Prisoners of the earth, come out. A screaming comes across the sky. It has happened before, but there is nothing to compare it to the now. As the V-2 plunges earthwards. Anytime you deny a genocide, anytime you enable a genocide, anytime you fund a country, that is enacting genocide every day, killing thousands and thousands of precious babies and innocent women and children. You are complicitous. And we are doing everything we can as the United States, working around the clock to deliver our own weapons pledge an additional $800 million in weapons. It includes the American-made anti-tank weapon. There's a whole wave of war criminals in Washington, D.C., going straight to the White House. We must end this horrific war in Gaza, bring home the hostages, and demand an immediate ceasefire. You see, they don't have any war. Yeah, that's a good idea. Five foot four, and he's six foot two. Fights with missiles and with spears. He's all of 31 and he's only 17. He's been a soldier for a thousand years. He's a Christian, a Hindu, an atheist, a Jain, a Buddhist, and a Muslim, and a Jew. He knows he shouldn't kill He knows he always will Kill you for me And me for you And he's fighting for Palestine He's fighting for Israel And he's fighting for the USA He 
He's the one who gives his body as a weapon of the war. And without him, all this killing can't go on. His orders come from far away no more. They come from him and you and me. And brothers, can't you see? This is not the way we put an end. The end to war. An end to war. Welcome to the intricate world of asymmetrical warfare. of the Youth International Party. Yippies, they called themselves, converged on Chicago. They said they were there to protest the war, poverty, racism, and other social ills. Some of them were also determined to provoke a confrontation, to draw attention from the convention to the streets. Mayor Richard Daley vowed to keep it peaceful, even if it took force to keep the peace. He was backed by 12,000 police, 5,000 National Guardsmen, 7,500 regular army troops. Police officers tasked with protecting and serving the local community looked much more like soldiers tasked with finding and destroying an enemy in a war zone. The police response shined a spotlight on the militarization of domestic policing, a national phenomenon that had been unfolding quietly for decades. Hundreds of marchers and dozens of policemen were injured. This was later called a police riot. Even inside the convention hall, the virus of violence was pervasive. Take your hands off of me. Dan Unless Rally. you intend to arrest me, don't, don't push me, please. Arabs terrified, aren't his Rockies terrified, don't I Arab and Iraqi women weep when their children die, doesn't bombing strengthen their determination? What fools we are to live in a generation for which war is a computer game for our children and just an interesting little channel for news items. Every member of parliament tonight who votes for the government motion will be consciously and deliberately accepted the responsibility for the deaths of innocent people and we the people of the United Nations determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war which has caused untold suffering to mankind. That was the pledge of that generation to this generation and it would be the greatest betrayal of all if we voted to abandon the Charter and take unilateral action. Jump up, 
the fire. If this is not contained quickly, and if these, these threats and intimidation are, are not stopped, there is an appropriate time for the National Guard. We have to bring order to these campuses. We cannot allow this to happen around the country. Tear gas first started down the commons, then the guard moved up on both sides of Taylor Hall and forced the kids off the commons. Then one group moved down in the practice football field, and then there were a whole lot of kids around them. A few kids were throwing sticks and stones, and then the guard shot some tear gas up on the hill to disperse the crowd, and the kids picked it up and threw it back. You know that. Look, I'm sorry, but I don't want people shot. I don't want people shot on this campus. This is a citizen of this Who wants people shot? All right, but they're sitting quietly. Okay, will you ask them to leave? All of a sudden, I heard the shooting. And then I saw people dropping to the ground. And then I fell to the ground also. So I couldn't walk anymore. It is important to understand these protesters are out there. They are out there because they are outraged that they do not want to see a situation continue where 110,000 Palestinians out of you know 5% of the population have been killed or wounded, where children now face starvation. Hundreds of thousands of children face starvation because Israel is refusing to allow humanitarian aid to get to where it has to go, where two thirds of the homes destroyed or damage where the entire civilian infrastructure, water, electricity has been annihilated, where every university in Gaza has been bombed. In 2021, the U.S. was home to half of the world's top 100 producers of arms. The U.S. was the number one weapons exporter by a large margin. 2,000 pounds. Is gonna... In the Gaza Strip, at least 40 Palestinians were killed, scores more injured this morning as an Israeli strike ripped through a tent encampment housing displaced Palestinians near Han Yunus. Israel dropped several 2,000 pound bombs on tents full of sleeping families in Gaza, killing at least 41. Also be aware, the U.S. saying the use of 2,000 pound bombs are completely unjustified throughout Gaza. see people are using their hands to dig to find the bodies of loved ones who are in smithereens. And I see a little girl shredded, like her arms are like, they're just shredded into pieces, like splayed or another toddler with half her brain falling out. High Mars. Javelins. Howitzers. They're made by American arms companies Back when Eisenhower was the president, golf courses is where most of his time was spent. So I never really listened to what the president said because in general, I believed that the general was politically dead. But he always seemed to know when the muscles were about to be flexed. Because I remember him saying something, mumbling something about a military industrial complex. Americans no longer fight to keep their shores safe just to keep the jobs going in the arms-making workplace. And 
then they pretend to be gripped by some sort of political reflex. But all they're doing is paying dues to the military industrial complex. The military and the monetary. The military and the monetary. The military and the monetary. The military and the monetary get together whenever they think it's necessary. They turn our brothers and sisters into mercenaries. They are turning the planet to a cemetery. Yeah, there were some smart bombs, but there were some dumb ones as well. We've got to work for peace. Peace ain't coming this way. If we only work for peace, if everyone believed in peace the way they say they do, we'd, we'd have peace. The only thing wrong with peace is that you can't make no money from it. Peace is not the absence of war, it is the absence of the rumors of war and the threats of war and the preparation for war. So I think it's important to understand why these young people are out there, and they are out there for the right reasons, to protest U.S. continued military aid and money to a right-wing extremist Netanyahu government, which is in a destructive war against the Palestinian people. Digscape presents Crossroads, the military, the monetary, the mercenary where we investigate the crossroads of where money meets might, where greed meets policy, and where doubt meets hope. now they're not even trying to conceal it anymore the owners of the country said they bought their election they said we're going to get this election we put you people in that court for a reason right, cool. they're openly driving the bus and we're all in the back there actually intend to go even further and paralyze for a moment the war machine. So the word is direct action. Pentagon, Washington, D.C., nerve center of the United States military establishment. 
for the biggest administration building in the world. Switchboard or octopus. City within the city, state within the state, whichever. It stands for the American war. It is the place with the world's greatest concentration of military men per square mile.
in Russia, in America, in France, in South Africa. They own everything. They own everything. They own the property. They own the TV stations. They own the radio stations. They own the musicians. They own the artists. They own everything. Now this conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The Pentagon hosted leaders from the top eight U.S. weapons manufacturers. They discussed the industry's capacity to meet weapons needs. Lockheed Martin is one of the world's five largest arms companies. The other top four, Raytheon, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and General Dynamics, are also all based in the U.S. These arms producers have been making more money. They could stand to benefit from tensions in Eastern Europe. They know that they can make a profit out of what it calls defending democracy. around my shoulder. Let's take a photo. Photos can last forever, but everything in them changes. Faces change, intentions and hearts change, seasons change, so landscapes and borders will change. Put your arm around me so we have more to remember, more to hope for, and more to regret. Just put your arm around me. When I look at the photos of our ancestors during the Nakba, I ask myself, did they know that the flash of the camera would be the last light they ever see before exile? <laughs> I look at the photos and it hits me. We are too beautiful to be exiled. We are too beautiful to turn into widowers and widows. We are too beautiful to be bereaved. We are too beautiful for death and more beautiful than heroism itself. We are more and more and more and more beautiful than the way we see ourselves. So let us take a photo before everything changes. And until everything changes, lean on me and put your arm around me. A father puts his arms around his terrified children huddles for cover behind a car. Another body lay in front of a mangled car. His eyes wince in pain as he clings to a rock for a pillow. They're alone. This is Gaza. 
and this is happening every single day. When the president says we will maintain the fight against terrorists in Afghanistan and other countries, we will continue lethal military operations regardless of the human costs, the fact that they violate every norm of international law, not to mention the country's sovereignty. Does that sound like an end to the forever wars that Biden promised? No, it's not an end to it. It's a continuation of it. And it falls in line with the continuation of these wars that the United States is waging throughout the Muslim world, from the west coast of Africa all the way to Pakistan. In these wars, the United States uses CIA forces, uses special operations forces, uses contractors or private corporations. They use drones as well as then using proxy forces. So using either proxy government forces or proxy militias. Throughout, again, the wars of the last uh, two decades, most especially since the second half of Barack Obama's term, this idea of hiding the war. So the wars continue, but they continue in a hidden fashion, hidden to people in the West, people in the United States, people in Europe. Standing, standing on the crossroad. I'm standing on the crossroad, baby. Standing, standing on the crossroad. I'm standing on the crossroad, baby. Standing, standing on the crossroad. We're going to have to work for peace. You got folks out there working for war, make a whole lot of money when you declare war. All you got to do is hurt somebody and you got yourself a war. All you got to do is not care about people to get yourself a war. You got to work for peace. Peace ain't coming this way, but since we all want peace, let's go to work. <laughs> 